So what is a random variable? And what does it mean when your weather app tells you that there's 70% chance of rain, for example? Well, let's start with an example that's a classic example for randomness, and that is where you toss a coin and there are two possible outcomes, heads or tails. And this forms the sample space. And so this is the uh, sample space and the random variable is defined as being a variable which maps the sample space onto the real numbers. So in this case, let's say, for example, we map the head to a zero and the tail to a one, and x is our random variable. And also, there is an associated probability. So what's the associated probability here? Well, the probability that x equals zero equals I should use round brackets there, uh, equals one half, and the probability that x equals one equals a half as well. Now, how do we know these? Uh, well, you know, how do we know over here that it's 70%? In this case, it's given to us from physics. So we know that a coin, unless it lands on its edge, when we toss the coin and we give it a, a random amount of input as we toss it, it spins around, half the time it will land on a head and half the time on a tail. So physics tells us these numbers. Uh, in this case, let's draw uh, out here, plot here, what we call the probability density function. And we use a little p for this. We give it a subscript of the random variable. So this is a probability density function for the random variable x. And we plot it as a function of the values that it can take. And we use the lowercase version of the random variable. So we traditionally use a capital letter for the random variable itself and a lowercase variable for what it for the variable of values it can take. So in this case it can only take two values, 0 or 1, and it takes them with the same probability. So this is the probability we're plotting here uh, on the vertical and the horizontal here is the values it can take. So it can only take 0 or 1 and it has a half chance of a 0 and half chance of a 1. This is the probability density function. So this is nice and simple in this case with a coin and only two outcomes and physics tells us the probabilities. That's not what you have with weather or with other more complicated scenarios. So let's think of uh, one next step of complication from here. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, we're looking at uh, people sitting on a train and we'd like to know whether they're using Wi-Fi or not. Uh, and we, maybe we're designing a Wi-Fi system. We need to know how much backhaul to have and to connect to the train. Uh, so in this case, what are the possible set of sample space? So let's say there's five people, for example, person one, person two, uh, three, four, and five. Uh, and let's say I use P to represent that they are using Wi-Fi. So this is a set of five people who are all using Wi-Fi. Uh, if I put a bar over the top, uh, let me use that to represent them not using Wi-Fi. So here is a set of five people, uh, of, of the five people who are in the train. Let's assume there's five people sitting on a train carriage. Uh, so here's the set where person one is not using Wi-Fi and all the others are. And you can enumerate all the other values, all the possibilities this set can take, where different of the people are or are not using Wi-Fi. And this bigger set is, in this example, this bigger set is our sample space. Okay, so this maps onto our random variable. So in this case, I'm going to use Y. Uh, this is a, it's your choice to label your random variables, but you use capital from tradition. Uh, and we're interested in the number of people using Wi-Fi. So in this case, Y takes elements from the set zero, there could be nobody using it, all the way up to five people using it. All five people are using the Wi-Fi. So this is our random variable. It's on the real space. It's from mapping from the set to the real numbers. But in this case, what is this associated probability? Uh, there's no physics that tells us this now, like the head and tail was here. So now we're, we've got a challenge if we're going to start trying to predict this uh, as statisticians or as engineers. So what are these probabilities? What's the probability that x equals 0? These are the things we have to establish for ourselves. x equals 1, probability that x equals 2, um, x equals 3, 
x equals 4 and x equals 5. These are the only possibilities that there are, and we need to know what these equal. We need to find a strategy for working this out. And this gets to the heart of what a random variable is. Okay, so what we know is we don't have a way of physics. We can't, we're not, we're not going to go to everybody's house before they get on the train and try to model whether they've uh, done the work they were supposed to do from the night before or whether their boss has uh, asking them to do something that they have to get done on the train in the morning or what have you. We're not going to model all of that. Uh, we're simply going to want to look and see in a snapshot how many people are using it. So one way we can do it instead of, because we don't have physics to tell us, one way is we could, we could make some modeling assumptions. So let's say, for example, uh, we're going to assume that two people out of five, two out of five, always use it, uh, use Wi-Fi. That might be something from either observations we've made or human nature, something that we know about. Let's, let's make these assumptions. So we're going to decide, in this case, we're going to do one way of working out these numbers is to make some assumptions. So let's assume two out of five always use. Let's assume one out of five never uses. And let's assume uh, the other two, two out of five, use uh, every second day or every other day randomly or one out of every two days, every other day, uh, let's say, at random. Um, maybe it's, I, sh I should probably say they use it half the days at random. So here's a way we could make a set of assumptions and this would tell us about these probabilities. So in this case, let's, let's do that in this example. So if two out of five always use Wi-Fi, then you're never going to have none. So what's the probability of getting no people if you do a snapshot, if you take a random carriage that has five people and measure the number, what's the probability of getting zero? just from a random snapshot. And this is, I'm using this word snapshot, it's an important word in random variables. So a one-off experiment, as sometimes it's called, a one-off measurement. Well, in this case, there's no chance, if two out of five are always using it, then there's no chance you've got zero or one. Um, there's also no chance you'll have five people if one out of five never uses it. Uh, and then you've got the probabilities in between here. So when will there be two? Well, there'll be two if these two are using it and these two are not using it. These two who use it half the time, if they're both not using it, and it's sort of every other day at random, then there's half a chance they will be. And if they've both got to not be using it, if it's only these two, then it's a half times a half. So that probability equals a quarter, assuming they're at random and independent, I should write here. So in a random and independent. It's also the case it'll be a quarter for having four because to have four, you'd have these two, and these two would have to both be using it. Well, there's a half a chance that one uses, half a chance the other, so the chance that they're both is a quarter. And what's the chance then that you have three people using it? Well, these two are using it, and then you've got to have one out of these two using it, so there's a chance that the first one does and the second one doesn't, or the other way around. So that's, in this case, a half chance. So if we use these modeling assumptions, that would give us a probability density function for this case here, probability density function of y with the values y, uh, which has finite values again, uh, up to five. Uh, there's no chance of getting zero, no chance of getting one, half a chance of getting two, sorry, quarter chance of getting two, half a chance, this is a quarter, this is a half, half a chance of getting three, quarter chance of getting four, zero chance of getting five. Okay, so this would be what you would get, what this is telling us is, if we did a snapshot, this would be the probability of getting that number of users. And that's what the PDF is telling us. Okay, that's under those assumptions. They might be wrong. And this is the case also with this example here with the weather. Okay, uh, so what's another thing you could do? Uh, the other thing you could, but this might be good enough. That's what I, uh, one thing important to say. Another thing you could do is you could do a lot of experiments over time. So you could look at a train uh, every day. You could sample another train. You could do that for lots and lots of days. And if the system was stationary, and this is getting into the realm of random processes more than random variables. We've got a video coming on that uh, on the channel soon. Um, but if you did that over lots of days, 
if the system was stationary, if the uh, random process was stationary, and we'll get to that in the next video, uh, and ergodic, then if you did a histogram of those, so every time you did that measurement over time, you put a, 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 a added to the column that corresponds to it. So maybe the first time you measured two, the second time on the next day there were three, the next day there was one, there was two again, the next day four, and so on. If you kept doing that over time, uh, these would these bars would grow taller, and if you scaled them back so that they added up to one, which these ones do, then you would have a probability density function which you had done by measuring over time. And if again, if it's a stationary project uh, process and ergodic, uh, you would get exactly a PDF. Uh, it might not be this one because you might measure, it might turn out that you've measured different ones and that it's not exact, in fact, this. Maybe these assumptions were wrong and you'll get a different probability density function measuring it that way. Uh, and that might be more accurate. It might be hard to do that as well. So that's not always the best thing to do because maybe it's not stationary. Maybe on certain days of the week, it's more likely for people to use it and on other days, it's less likely. Uh, maybe the weather has an effect as well and maybe these modeling assumptions were accurate, actually better. Who's to say? That's actually one of the complexities of working with random variables in these more complicated systems where it's not just modeled exactly as physics uh, and you have to think about how to model the probabilities which are mapping from the space to the real numbers. So hopefully this has given you more insights into random variables. Uh, if you like the video please give it a thumbs up, it helps others to find the video. Uh, Subscribe to the channel for more videos. Uh, check out the website, which has a full categorized list of videos. They're all available, all these links are available below this uh, video. Uh, and uh, and um, check, out out, check out the channel for more videos.